Hey, and welcome to my video. This is for the Maryland side of the Assateague Island National Seashore OSV. That's over sand vehicle. It's where you can drive out onto the beach. I get a whole ton of questions on uh, the OSV zone. You know, where is it? How much does it cost? What equipment do I need? All that stuff. So I'm going to make this video and hopefully it'll help you guys out. If you ever decide to come out here, you'll know exactly where to go and what to do. Uh, as far as... Assateague Island, it is world famous for its wild ponies. If you see them, just kind of stay back from them. They do kick and bite, so don't try to feed them or pet them or anything like that. There's signs all over the place that say it. Full disclaimer, double check the rules and regulations before you decide to come out. Uh, I don't want to hear of anybody getting into trouble saying they saw my YouTube video and all that. So please, please, please just double check the rules. Uh, as far as the history of OSV, they've been driving cars out here since the early uh, 1920s. Residents from Ocean City would drive directly onto the beach. That's, that was way, way back when Ocean City and Assateague were all one big piece of land. There was a massive hurricane that came through in 1933 that divided Ocean City and Assateague, creating what you see now as the inlet. Alfred Peters started operating a small ferry from the mainland onto the island. The purpose was to transport his cattle so that they could graze, but it was also used frequently by surf fishermen and hunters to get onto OSV. Leon Ackerman in 1950 put in a five-car ferry when he was trying to develop his Ocean Beach real estate venture. And again, that too was also used by OSVers. They've been coming out here for a long, long time. The National Park Service acquired a portion of Assateague Island in 1965 and 66, where they also encountered a ton of OSVers. Many of the locals were in a, uh, a club called the Assateague Beach Buggy Association that was formed in 1965. In 1968, it was renamed Assateague Mobile Sport Fishermen's Association, which we call AMSA. Right here in the video, you're going to see on the left, I'm pulling up to the federal side booth to pay my entrance fee to get into the park. On the right side is the uh, visitor center where you can get your OSV permits. So anyway, going back to the AMSA, their primary uh, purpose was to fight so that, to keep the beach accessible so that OSV could stay open while conservationists were putting pressure to restrict or eliminate it due to destroying dunes, grasses, wildlife, etc. So to counter it, AMSA designed rules prohibiting dune driving, littering, and anything else that they deemed uh, offensive practices. All of these rules still apply today. You absolutely cannot drive on the dunes, and there's uh, a whole slew of things that you kind of need to follow. Right here, I've reached the end of the federal side. I'm turning into the roundabout now. I'm going to make my second right, and uh, that's where the OSV zone is. You'll see me pull off and let some air out of my tires. So regarding Assateague Island, it's extremely easy to get to. You just take Route 50 as if you're driving into Ocean City. Uh, you're going to turn right onto Route 611. It's also called Stephen Decatur Highway, and just follow that all the way to the end, and you'll go up over the bridge onto the island. Assateague is only eight miles from Ocean City, so it's not far to get to. The island itself is broken up into two sections. There's a state and a federal side. Uh, when entering the island and going over the bridge, if you stay straight, you go to the state side. If you make your uh, first right, you go to the federal side. Follow that two miles down, and that's where you saw me at the uh, ranger booth paying my fee. There is an entrance fee to both parks. Uh, both of which have a ranger in it, so you can just pay them right there. The OSV portion, again, is located all the way at the end of the federal side. The state side does not have an OSV portion. So as of January uh, 1st, 2020, the entrance fee of the federal park is $25 for a week-long pass, $45 for a year-long pass. Motorcycles are just $20, and if you're walking or riding your bicycle, it's free. For the OSV permit, that's right, you got to pay a park uh, entrance fee to get into the park, and then you have to pay another fee for the, the permit to drive on to get your OSV pass. Uh, for the, the pass, the OSV pass, they offer three different types. There's a day pass, the overnight, and the bullpen. Bullpens, if you're not familiar, it's a, a camper insert that goes into the bed of your pickup truck, so you can camp out there. For the day pass, it's $90.00. 
Overnight's $110, and the bullpen's $150. Like I was just saying, if you, uh, at the visitor center, just go in there where I uh, just pointed out in the video, bring in your vehicle registration, and they will set you all up with everything you need to know. For the day pass, you can be on the beach anywhere between 5 a.m. and 11 p.m. The overnight pass is 24 hours, but you must be actively fishing between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. You cannot go to sleep out there. You can't pitch a tent and fall asleep, try to go to sleep in your car, anything like that. You have to be basically actively uh, fishing. For the bullpen, there's a certain section set up for those uh, campers, and it's marked off. You can park anywhere you want on the beach, but when you're camping out in your bullpen, you've got to be in your designated uh, section that they have. Camper trailers are not allowed on the beach. Uh, camper trailers and tents are not allowed in the bullpen either. You can camp on Assateague Island. You just can't bring your camper out onto the beach. For the Maryland portion of the OSB, it's 12 miles uh, of beach driving. And that's from the entrance of OSV all the way down to the Virginia state line at the end. You're going to see it here soon. The Virginia line is blocked off uh, with poles and cables, so you can't drive onto the, the Virginia side. OSV is filled with a ton of history from private beach houses like the Clements House all the way at the very end on the state line, as well as waterfowl lodges that were offered, offered uh, world-class waterfowl hunting in the early 1900s to early 1960s before the government took them over. There are no private houses out there now. The government owns all of it. You're more than welcome to explore the island, but while you're driving, you are required to stay east of the white markers with the black tops. As I'm driving down, you'll be able to see uh, the markers. Basically, between the ocean and the markers is where you can drive. You cannot drive on top of the dunes, over the dunes, any place over there. Just so you know, federal rangers actively patrol the beach and they issue citations. From what I hear, they're pretty expensive, so uh, I would not try it. As far as the speed limit on the beach, it's 25 miles an hour. Here's a couple rules that you'll need to know. Uh, Four-wheel drive vehicles are required. Don't even try to drive on without four-wheel drive. Every year I see somebody try it. Uh, some of them will make it about 50 feet. The majority will make it about 10 feet before they get stuck. The rangers will not tow you out. Uh, the cost of a tow is around $800 to $1,500, and that's through a private towing company that you have to find. As you can see right here, I reached the end of the uh, Maryland side, and that's the Virginia-Maryland state line. For your tires, I recommend uh, letting the air pressure out. The, we call it airing down. You can drop the air pressure between 15 and 20 PSI. Some people recommend 15, some say 20. I've never had an issue with either, uh, but please just make sure you air down. If not, you may get stuck out there. It takes a couple minutes to do it anyway before you go. Better safe than sorry. To inflate your tires when you're leaving, there's pumps provided by the National Park Service. And that's just past the, the gates uh, on the right-hand side as you're leaving the OSV zone. You're going to see me do it here in a second. There's also dumpsters that you can throw all your trash away. As far as requirements to have, you are required to have a flathead shovel, a jack, jack support, tire gauge, tow rope, strap, or chain. For more specifics on it, you can just do a quick Google search, Assateague Island National Seashore OSV. Uh, they have the, pretty much the a specific list of what you're supposed to carry. Uh, the rangers can ask to check your equipment at any time just to make sure you have it with you. Uh, and they do actively patrol the beach checking for permits. So uh, just a, a word of caution on that one. And there's a couple rules that they have. All trash must be carried out with you. You can throw it in the dumpsters right there in front of you. You are allowed to have fires on the beach, but you cannot have out-of-county wood. So to, there, to get firewood, there's tons of places on the way to Assateague. You can pull over and get some. Uh, as far as setting the fires, they have to be set below the tide line, the high tide line, and they have to be entirely burned out. If they're not burned out, you can just put them out with water and make sure you bring the, the remaining wood out with you. Pets are allowed. Uh, they have to be leashed, and the leashes can't be longer than six feet. For those that like to indulge in the alcoholic beverages, you can drink out there, and it's, it's perfectly fine. 
the only thing that they do not allow is glass bottles and obviously no drinking and driving. Uh, you can have them in cans, cups, whatever, just no glass bottles. If you decide to do fishing out there, the fishing is excellent. Uh, I highly recommend it. All fishing regulations and licenses apply, so just make sure you have your fishing license. As far as grills and grilling out on the beach, you are uh, also allowed to do that. Uh, I recommend a small portable charcoal grill so it takes up less room. And just obviously make sure that it's cold before you put it back in your vehicle. As far as tents, you can have tents out there too. Uh, as long as it's between the 5 a.m. and 11 p.m. After that, you can't have tents on the beach. So here's a couple tricks that will uh, help you out to make it easier for you. The vehicle limit is 145. There's a gate at the beginning of the OSV zone uh, that has a counter on it. Once that counter reaches 145 vehicles, the gate will not go up. So at that point, it becomes a one-off, one-on scenario where the gate arm will only go up when a vehicle comes off. Typically during the summer months, it'll max out at 145. And there's a line that'll start to form. Usually on weekends, if you're there around 6 a.m., you do have a pretty good chance of getting in on time. You can visit a website called osvcount.com. It's not affiliated with the National Park Service or OSV. Uh, it's a self-reporting website where the members can report the current count and uh, how many vehicles in line. So you know if you have a shot of, of getting on before you even make the truck out there. So hopefully this video helps you out. Uh, I highly recommend checking it out. And uh, if, you, if there's anything that I missed or you think, uh, think I missed or have questions about, just drop a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. And uh, have fun, and hopefully I'll see you on the beach. Thanks.